Uncle, can you please share, uh, you know, what attracted you to Puja Gurudev first? I cannot say something specific attracted me. It truly was a love at first sight. Okay. And it was reciprocal. Mm. It was the magnetic personality that uh, Gurudev had that just attracted uh, many devotees like me and I was one of the many. Okay. And the thing that attracted me the most was the ease with which he could uh, explain the most complex concepts of uh, Vedanta in a very, very simple manner. Okay. He truly was all-knowing. He knew everything. Uh, from making the best idli to explain the most difficult concepts of Vedanta, this no exaggeration, he knew it all. And the, his dynamism, the way he interacted with people from children all the way to the Vedantic masters is all in all. That's what attracted me the most to him. He is a fantastic organizer, the best chief executive ever. And that's what really, I can go on and on and on. Sorry, where did you meet Gurudev? Okay. Uh, it was in June of 1977. It was in Ottawa, Canada. A group of uh, devotees, as a matter of fact, just two families uh, who met uh, Gurudev in Guntur in the early 60s knew that uh, Swami Chirmayananda was coming to Ottawa and they wanted to go and uh, see him in uh, Ottawa, Canada. Those two happened to be my teachers back home in uh, Guntur Medical College. So basically, they wanted somebody to drive them to go to Ottawa. So I went there basically as a chaperon or a driver. Myself and Sumati, along with those two couples, we went to Ottawa, Canada. Swamiji was uh, staying at Sheraton Hotel. And there are a group of people in the hotel suite. And we just walked in and uh, he was giving satsang, a lot of people asked about Atma, Jeevatma, Paramatma, Vasanas and uh, totally foreign language to me. Mm -hmm. Evening we went to the lecture, mm -hmm. it was in the University of Ottawa. Mm -hmm. I think Indian High Commissioner was there at the mm -hmm. inaugural speech and all that. Then Swamiji gave a discourse on Kare Karna Siddhanta. Mm -hmm. I was just awestruck. I was sitting in the last bench, mm -hmm. uh, in extreme right. Next day, he asked me, why were you sitting alone, all alone in the last row in the back? I had no answer to that question. I just shrugged my shoulders. Mm -hmm. Then he asked me, where are you from? I said, so you were all from uh, Michigan. Mm -hmm. He said, where in Michigan? Mm -hmm. I said, uh, Detroit. Detroit or someplace near Detroit? I said, so from Flint. Mm -hmm. He said, how far is it from Detroit? I said, about uh, 50 miles. He said, oh, I was there uh, a few years ago at the University of Detroit. I gave some lectures. I said, uh, I just came there last year, so a few years back, and uh, I don't remember. He said, mm -hmm. and he said uh, are you coming back for the lecture this evening? I said, no, so we are leaving. He said, you mean you came all the way from Michigan mm -hmm. just to listen to one lecture? I just shrugged my shoulders, and I didn't say anything. And a few minutes passed by. Then he got up from the chair in the Sheraton Hotel, he went to his bedroom and he said, come. So I went into the bedroom. He opened his diary and he said, uh, next June I'm coming to Michigan. I'll spend one week with you, you arrange Agnya. I had no idea what Agnya meant. In my mind Agnya means uh, fire and home and all this uh, kind of stuff. He said, no, he said, this is called Geta Gnana Agnya. I just uh, acted dumb. I said, I don't know what to uh, do. He said, no, I will, I will tell you what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. And very briefly, he said, uh, you, have to, you invite all your friends. We have lectures. We have interaction. We can we'll talk about Vedanta, about Gita, chapter 12 or something. He said, okay. Then after getting into the car, I told my senior friend, Swamiji is coming to Michigan. He said, oh, come on, you must be kidding us. They didn't believe that Swamiji... It's going to Michigan. This happened in the bedroom. So a few days later, I get a letter from Swamiji confirming the dates, the topic. It was uh, about Gita chapter 12 and Ken Upanishad for morning Upanishad class. Then he briefly described what Ekna means, what we need to do, the BMI chart, 
Samita Ponji's uh, photograph in the backdrop and all the very nice letter. Mm -hmm. Then our organizational uh, mind got into the act and we organized uh, an Egna in uh, 1978, June, in Tri, Michigan. It was a success. More than 300 people attended the uh, evening classes, about 50, 60 attended the morning classes. It was a nice event and uh, I was really pleased by the way the response and the Gurudev obviously was very pleased. Then before the Yagna was over, he said, uh, Doctor, next year we'll have a camp. <laughs> I said, I didn't know what camp meant. I never went to camp before. I never participated in I asked mm -hmm. him, what is the camp? Mm -hmm. He says, we all will spend a whole week together mm -hmm. from uh, 5 a.m. to 10 p.m. It can be a hotel, it can be a college, dorms, anything that you think is appropriate for a family. The family setting is called a family camp. He said, the children will have their own program. The adults will have adult discourses, youth will have their own programs. He says, uh, we'll plan the thing, so let's find a place and we'll organize one. So in 1979, we conducted the first camp in uh, Michigan. My interest in uh, Vedanta was invoked by Gurudev. In 1980, again Swamiji came back to Flint. There's well a true bond all between our family and Gurudev. When he was in Flint, he developed heart failure. So, 77 was the first introduction, 78 was the Ignea, 79 was the camp, 80 again was the Ignea. So, four years in a row, we had opportunity to, to spend a week to ten days with Gurudev. Then he developed his heart failure. Yeah. Then he went to Chicago, then we brought him back to Flint. Mm -hmm. Then his health care was uh, obviously became a responsibility of ours. He went, we did a cardiac catheterization in Flint, which uh, mm -hmm. helped to make a diagnosis of uh, blocked uh, vessels uh, going into the heart. Mm -hmm. An addition was made to do surgery on the heart. So we picked what we thought was the best place in the world at the time. It was Houston, Texas, and uh, Dr. Cooley, he did the surgery. And Swamiji recuperated in uh, Flint for almost uh, four to six weeks after surgery. Mm -hmm. So that's how a true personal bond has developed between uh, our family and Gurudev right. and that has only grown over the years for the next uh, 13 years. Okay. Okay. And what were the first lessons that you learned from Puja Gurudev Ankar? Okay. Any question that we had, we write a letter to Gurudev, you know, we'll get the reply back in 10 to 11 days. Five days for the mail to go, the okay. snail mail, one day to reply, five days back you get a reply back. Obviously, by looking at the handwriting, you know that you got a letter from Swamiji. It can be as uh, simple a question as, should we offer uh, private uh, rooms or should, should be double rooms? And he would answer uh, depending on the facilities and what to do. What kind of food to serve in the Ignea, in the camps? Obviously, it's all vegetarian. As a matter of fact, somebody, one of the senior devotees uh, from Canada wrote to me, that her, her husband would like to come, but only if we can serve non-vegetarian. Then obviously I answered, the, I posed the question to Gurudev. He replied uh, back, he says, nobody ever died of not eating non-vegetarian for a week, but if he does, we'll bury him ceremoniously. <laughs> it was very simple answer, straightforward. Yes, there's a no, no, and no. And we learned a lot of organizational skills from Swamiji. His message was very clear. You do what you think is right, rest of, the, rest of it will take care of itself. He says, you take care of the devotees, devotees will take care of the mission. He says, don't go to there to be appreciated, congratulated. You do your work, people will appreciate what we do. Yes. Uh, he says, true karma yoga in action. He says, whatever you do, do with Chitta Suddhi without any selfish motive. He says, uh, it will happen. As his classic teaching was, plan out your work and work out your plan. Until now, <laughs> uncle got very much involved with, no, uh, with uh, no time, right? So, first Yegna and then camp. So, where exactly you got also involved into the organizational activities? Every minute to minute, when Gurudev was with us, mm. it is like a machine work. There is no time to think also. Okay. 
just uh, wake up at 4 a.m., keep ready his breakfast, his coffee, his tea, coffee, and uh, guess who is coming and going and serving them. I mean, there is no time to think. Morning to evening, at go to bed 1 a.m. after cleaning up everything and ready for next day morning. Like that, it's a machine work. Have you ever Absolutely. felt the stress of the work, Claude and Aunty? It is easy to do the work than seeing all the guests with the different, different varieties of the people coming. And you have to know, we never met them before. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have to take care of them, different attitudes, different mentalities. They come to see Swamiji, they come to test him, they have a lot of things to tell. You know, their uh, meeting with the Gurudev, their experiences, good or bad, whatever they are, you have to listen to them. It was just an experience of uh, hosting. Gurudev means you are hosting the whole world. Now, both of you have to share the wonderful, I mean, of course, for Gurudev it was a painful thing. Your memories when Gurudev underwent first bypass, he stayed with you for how many weeks, until six uh, weeks? More than six weeks. More than six weeks, right? So, personally treating Gurudev as, a, as doctors, you have to share those experiences, Uncle. It was tough. The decision was tough. It was uh, June. July of uh, 1980, the decision was made that Swamiji needs heart surgery. By then, he already had a heart attack ten years before that. And uh, the heart was pumping only at 80 percent uh, capacity. Means one is not functional at that low level of cardiac output. But Swamiji was giving these courses uh, actively. And to submit him to surgery, with a definite risk of not coming out of it successfully was a tough decision. Basically, Swamiji made the decision himself. It's not we that said that. We laid out the facts with uh, Gurudev. I told him, Swamiji, you have a problem with the heart and the heart vessels are blocked up and they need to be bypassed and uh, there's a very, very good chance of uh, coming out successfully. But any surgery of this heart is risky. He thought of it, he said, yes, yes, he says, how long does it take? He says, Swamiji, if we decide yes, we will uh, cancel the surgeon, we will uh, go to Houston, and it will be a few days in the hospital for a week or so. Then how long, when can I get back to work? I lied. I said, maybe a couple of weeks. <laughs> I knew in my own heart, it's not it's going to be a couple of months, <laughs> not a couple of weeks. Yeah. He says, what would it cost? I said, not much. Next day morning, uh, we were having breakfast. He said, yes, let's plan. Some of you were staying in the basement because you could not walk up the stairs. We had to walk out the basement where the car will come to the back. That's where my radiology library was. And then uh, the night before, Swamiji went through the angiogram books and figure, he figured out the coronary anatomy, the anatomy of the blood vessels of the heart. He said, Dr. show me where the blocks are. So I showed him this, this and this. He says, what did they do? So they take a wind from the leg and they put a bypass graft and all that. Then he understood what exactly is getting into. Then uh, you, we don't need to send out a letter to all the devotees. This happened. He said yes. He dictated the letter under my signature. Okay. He said don't mail it until after surgery is over. He said. So it was in Houston and that coolie came and uh, met Swamiji. The, uh, it was on a Saturday. Yeah. He said, Swami, what is a good day by the Hindu calendar to have surgery? He said, Kuli, any day is a good day as long as Kuli is operating on me. <laughs> he was a kind of astrak. How about uh, Monday? I said, Kuli, any day is a good day. I'm also ready tomorrow. Let's go right now. <laughs> but remember what I said, as long as Cooley operates on you, not your assistants, not your fellows. He, he, he alone. <laughs> he said that. He said, yes, Swami, I understand. So, I was told that it was the first time after a long time that Cooley did the surgery completely on his own, oh. from skin to skin. Normally, he does uh, the most 
crucial part of the surgery where you bypass the vessel. But in Swamiji's case, he did the whole thing from incision to the yeah. closure. As many of you have seen Swamiji's heart, yes. where uh, with the Paul Dad camera at that time was very popular. Mm -hmm. Cooley himself took a Paul Dad photograph of the heart, of the bypass graft that he made in Swamiji's heart and gave it to us as a souvenir. And that we distributed to all the people that uh, donated the money for the heart. Mm -hmm. It was successful uh, surgery and uh, Swamiji was discharged within a week or ten days. This was in Houston. You know how active still my mission is in Houston right now, but at the time we had trouble finding a family that would give Swamiji a decent vegetarian meal. So we had to go 60 miles out of Houston to one of the devotees' homes who happens to be related to senior devotees <laughs> of Chinmaya Mission in India. The Dwarakanath Reddy's family. Okay. Their family was not too far from Houston, so they used to bring some food. Before that, there's no family that uh, could cater to our uh, needs. So just give miles, uh, but just to get the food. Get the vegetarian food for some reason when he was in Houston. The first now, day after the surgery, mm -hmm. Because nobody was there mm -hmm. to give him any Indian mm -hmm. vegetarian food. Mm -hmm. So we gave uh, hospital the clear soup they start with. Mm -hmm. So he had mm -hmm. just uh, my brother was there and helping him that day. Mm -hmm. So he had one tiny spoon, put it in his mouth and he just spit it so fast. And he said, what was that he said? He said, he says, it smells like a chicken broth. Chicken broth. <laughs> it's, a, it's a vegetarian soup, but with chicken broth. <laughs> so, yeah. In the, there, the vegetarian soup also has some base. After that, like, well, how long was he in the hospital? He was in the hospital for a week or ten days. Hmm. Then he came to Michigan and he re recuperated uh, for two, three weeks in one of the resorts in the northern Michigan. Then he came home and spent a few weeks at home. One of yes. the things uh, the Swamiji, the <laughs> doctor recommended was that he should be walking. Uh, one part of the cardiac rehab mm -hmm. after surgery. Mm -hmm. So I used to go to work and then come home at four, five o'clock, and we used to go. One day I came and uh, from work. Uh, from he he work. used to come from work and ask. No, I saw him around for four thirty, five o'clock. Mm -hmm. Swamiji, let's go for the walk. <laughs> he said, "Oh, I finished my walk today." He said. <laughs> I said, wow. I said, uh, how long do you you walk? I said, four or five miles. <laughs> uh, then I asked uh, my wife, I said, did you guys go already? Yeah. She said, no. Uh, I said, Swamiji, uh, I don't think Swamiji went for walk. He said, I told you I went. I walked mentally today five miles. <laughs> no physical walk. He says, I finished my walk today. No more. And again, in the 91 May, when he was in uh, your cantonment with heart failure, and that was the time we made plans to professionally videotape uh, the Bhagavad Gita. This was the marathon camp in uh, Piercy, California. At that time, Swamiji was in heart failure. We took him to Dr. Kanu Chatterjee in uh, San Francisco. By then we knew that the heart is not functioning uh, very well. And uh, Dr. Chatterjee said that Swamiji is not a candidate for surgery. At that time, the decision was should we submit him to second surgery to bypass the blocked uh, grafts or just to manage him uh, without surgery, just with medications. Kanu Chatterjee, one of the authorities in heart failure, said that uh, he's not a candidate for surgery and we will uh, manage him medically. And slowly deteriorated health from 91 to 93. And 93 again he had a cardiac arrest. He did try rather desperately to do second bypass surgery after the they stopped, uh, after the heart stopped uh, beating. Again, it was not uh, successful. Gurudev, did you ever feel he was a superhuman? Yeah, absolutely, no question. Um, Swamiji was uh, undergoing bypass in one uh, operation theater in uh, San Francisco, in uh, San Juan. Uh, La Jolla, California, near San Diego. And the uh, operating rooms were there, there were seven, eight of them. In the next room was uh, another orthopedic surgeon, an American operating, and uh, he came to this room. I was watching the surgery, obviously. He said, I feel some vibrations in the operating room. Something is going on, some great uh, thing. Mahatma is here. 
you know, we showed him. He He's a Westerner. Yeah. Westerner. Yeah. He says, I can feel them in my room. In the next operating room, he was operating, operating. somebody else. He yeah. doesn't even know anything what's going on uh-huh. with the Gurudev in the next room. Yes. So he just felt some vibrations, it seems. Something... Unusual, really, unusual, unusual and uh, pleasant yeah. and uh, the so-called out-of-body experience was going yes. on. So he asked the nurses, what's going on around, you know, I feel some vibrations here, something different than usual. They said, yeah. we, you know, we don't know, but some uh, Swami is getting surgery next yeah. room. Yeah, that was uh, uh, July 27th or 28th. Of, uh, yeah. And uh, the... To have been a part of the Swamiji's health care uh, was a blessing and, and a great experience.